Briggs, all he needs is a, basically a, a referral. You know, he needs to get his captain to, to call uh, the, the diplomatic security company and, and just vouch for him, say he's a squared away soldier, and that's, that's what he wants. To get that, he has to take Lulu on this road trip from, from basically the Pacific Northwest all the way down to kind of very close to the, to the Mexican border. And uh, it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be a handful. You know, you think just putting a dog in a car and just driving it down there is enough, but one of these dogs is, and this guy also, uh, they're both special, let's just say. And, and they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna fight each other all the way down the, down the coast. And, and, uh, and if he does that, and if he gets Lulu to this funeral without, any, without anything that happens bad, then he gets the referral. And uh, that's all he's gotta do. They're both pretty insane. They're both pretty, they're, they'll, they'll definitely go, they'll go until they can't go anymore. And, and, I, and I think when you have two brick eaters that are, ready to, that are ready to lock up at any point, you know that you can have fireworks almost at any moment in the movie, that there's, a, there's an actual gun in that car, two guns essentially, like that are like a, it's a powder keg. It can pop off at any moment. And, and they're equal matches for each other. There's a there's a moment where, where we like we both grab a you know a, this like stuffed unicorn, and look, it, like the unicorn was never gonna stay together if if one of us didn't like wasn't either told to let go or if didn't just let go before it ripped, because it would have just been done like in, in a heartbeat. And uh, so it's it's just funny. They're they're equal match, and the only difference between them is that one's a canine and one's a one's a human, <laughs> humanish. Dogs are kind of these like very present things, you know, they don't have so much. They do on some level that, you know, maybe we'll never know. How much are they thinking of the future? How much are they thinking of the past? Like, who knows? But the first, like every time you come home is like the first time that you've come home, you know? And like, it doesn't matter. You, I could walk out of the house for 30 minutes and then, you know, that cutie, my new dog, like she's just like, oh my God, you're back, you're back. <laughs> like, like, and it's just, it's, I think, such a reminder of joy is always sort of accessible, you know, and, and even though we're humans and I think we do focus entirely too much on the future and, and the past, you can really only experience joy in the present. And I think dogs are just so present. And, you know, I think they're so, all of a sudden their whole state, they can go from like dead asleep to like, you know, having the time of their life, you know, and or, or s switch to another emotion, you know, really, really fast. And I think it, it's all in a real time sort of thing. It doesn't mean they don't wanna go play fetch or go for a walk or something, but it, I think it's something beautiful. I think humans somehow love dogs because of that. You know, I think Lulu's a different dog than probably the last time he saw her. Um, so I, I don't know if he knows exactly what to expect he knows what these dogs are capable of that's for sure he, he's he's worked with her he's went out on deployments with her he's seen her do what these dogs do what these war dogs do and it is it is pretty you know full on and but he's done it himself he's he's been kicking indoors for a while as well and you know they're equals and and like they're those dogs are soldiers to him they're not they're not equipment slowly he actually starts to take care of this dog <laughs> like he's, he and in a way you know we I, we definitely did not want to be heavy-handed about this if anything we we almost wanted this to be unintelligible in the movie other than to us like the dog is him you know they they're just mirrors for each other and you know he he kind of I think discovers this connection and this sort of just want to connect with this dog and it's not even, I don't think it's even conscious. They would all know the word rolling and action because it, it, it was a prompt for them. And that happened on the day one. Day one, third, third take, second take even, you know, because we had rehearsed something before that. Like as soon as they yelled rolling and then everyone yells rolling around set and all the energy goes up. And you don't want the dog's energy to be up because you want it to be calm and chill and not pull you around. And 
these dogs are just so smart. Like they're incredibly smart and they love working. It's what they wake up. They wake up in the morning and they're like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Where are we going? How do we get to do it? Let's do it as many times as we possibly can. Please don't, like, let's not go to sleep. There's a scene where I run out to the car and Zuza's in the car because Zuza's going, going ape in the car. And, and I have to open the door and be like, what? And like scream and be really aggressive. Like, you know, what do you want? And because Zuzu was like my friend, like in real life, she was just like, oh my God, what did I do? Like I was only doing what I was, what I was supposed to do. Why am I getting yelled at right now? Her ears like went back and I was like, oh, <laughs> it like broke my heart. Cause I was like, no, no, we're homies. So like we, each and after every one of those scenes, I would have to go over and be like, no, it's okay. Like you're, you're my friend. They must think I'm out of my mind. Brett Rodriguez, you know, I, I've probably, I've known him equally as long as I've known Reed. Uh, we all met on the same movie, this movie called Stop Loss. And uh, he was someone that I met and just sort of an advisor. He, he, was, a, he was in the military, he was in the 10th Mount. And um, just to be around soldiers, you know, like that's kind of, they put us with, you know, real soldiers and we just became friends and, and just stayed in touch through the years. And then uh, he worked with me in different, different capacities at different times. And then he went back and contracted uh, for a few years and then he came back and then he actually produced and I think he, I think he even directed some of um, uh, War Dog because of all of his connections into the military. You know, we, we all did a lot of sort of getting our foot in the door of certain special forces. You know, they're, they're a tight knit group and you can't just call up the Rangers and be like, hey guys, what's up? We want to come bring cameras into your lives. Like, uh, <laughs> like, it wasn't like that. You had to go and like earn their trust, let them know what, what we were doing. And it, and it was really Brett that did that. He, he really embedded himself in these people's lives. And, and, and you know, it's, it, it was a big responsibility. He's like, look, if we're going to make a movie about a, he, he wasn't a ranger. That's not something that he can, you know, claim. He's like, I'm not that. I'm not them. And what they do is different than what I did. And, and he, wanted to make sure that it was done right. And because these guys are really special to him and they're actually really special to us. He really listens and not just listens with just this like, all right, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna just like dictate that back down onto the page. Like, you know, almost just like, I'm gonna take everything you said and I'm just gonna like put it there. No, he really digs and finds a larger meaning that I would have never been able to see in it. Like, and his ability to see the 30,000 foot view, he's taught me more about movies than almost any of the directors that I've, that I've worked with that are some of the best directors in the world. You know, because of the time that we've had together. And, you know, I, I don't feel stupid asking him any question. And I'd be like, wait, what is that? I don't even know what that word is that you used. What does that mean? And... And just like there, there's just a, a connection and a, and a compassion that I think he has unlike almost anyone that I've worked with. And, and like the connection is the, the, the will to want to understand something that he might not understand. I think one thing that, that Reed has almost head and shoulders above everybody and not just because he's 6'6", uh, is that he actually wants to know what they're understanding. Like he's like, all right, what are you, what are you getting? Like what? And he, and he's really trying to have them put themselves into the character, into the movie. And then that comes, I think, from the writing that he, and where he's, what he's learned in the writing process as well as he, he really wants people to have a say and to be a part of the creative process and not for it to be a dictatorship.